Hi, and welcome to the digital job site, where the boards are straight, the weather's great, and there really is a board stretcher. This video is going to give a quick overview on how to implement the photo match feature that SketchUp offers, where you can import digital photos and create models to superimpose over them for uh, designing and presenting to potential clients or evaluating a design for further modification. So I've opened up SketchUp here and to start with the photo match feature I'm just going to go to the camera menu and select interestingly enough the match new photo option which takes you to the your uh, hard drive and I'm not, everybody's probably got these set up different but I've got folders and stuff set up so I can easily locate things and I'm going to select this photo match blog image and select open to import it into SketchUp. So that's pretty simple. This uh, f the next thing you'll notice is this photo match dialog box opens up and you can select grid styles here because this is a room interior I'm going to select the inside style and grid set on auto. I'm not going to worry about the spacing and I'm going to close this. I'm not done with it but I'm going to close it to get it out of the way. So you get this hodgepodge of lines and boxes that show up on the screen and you could probably spend a whole bunch of time with this but I just want to go through it quickly to give you a general idea you can focus more on the particulars of this if it if your job at hand requires it and one of the things I found out over time doing this is that uh, I'm not a photographer but there's something called parallax that is uh, a byproduct of taking photos with a camera and in the real world this corner is probably pretty parallel to that corner but the lines you can see kind of angle in so it seems to help get this process uh, moving along is to pick a point near the middle of the photo where the parallax is, is at a minimum and some smart photographer could probably uh, enlighten us all a little bit on more how parallax works and how to work around it but for the purposes of this video I'm just going to grab this orient, um, origin point and put it at the bottom of this door trim. It's fairly near the center of the photo and uh, I installed the door so I'm confident that it's pretty plumb in the real world. So I just set the origin there and the purpose of these red and green dotted lines and boxes are to orient uh, f uh, sketch up through photo match to the um, axes of the actual space. So all I'm going to do is grab, you'll see how these things work when you grab a, an end box uh, then the axes all kind of pivot around and the goal here is just to line up these dotted lines parallel to uh, geometry in the actual space that you're going to photo match to. So I've taken a red one there and oriented it right and left in this room. And you can zoom in, zoom out, whatever you want to get these as, as close and accurate as your project requires. And one of the interesting things about SketchUp in the real world is you can see that there's a discrepancy in the ceiling between this line and I have a feeling that's a bow in the ceiling and not uh, anything to do with parallax but interesting things show up when you uh, superimpose digital perfection on a, a real-world structure that's uh, 25 years old or so anyway so we've got the origin set uh, the red axes are pretty close so let's just pick a couple things for these green axes to line up with I'm going to take the edges there's this brick hearth zoom in a little bit the end of this box doesn't need to be on the end of the line in the image it just has you just want to end up with the dotted line parallel to the edge. There's that one. And let's pick this one up in this corner and see what that does to everything. And when I talk about the parallax thing, part of what shows up is if we line these up, if this room was perfectly square and there was no parallax, then this blue axis would be lined up with the edge of that trim. But because the trim is near the center of the drawing, I'm more confident of its being plumb 
than this line out here on the edge being accurate. So I'm just going to we'll pick something else in the room. How about the other edge of this hearth to set the green axes with? And the farther away you get from the center of the drawing, depending on the angle of the photograph, etc., um, that'll be thrown off more. You'll see things not lining up that probably should. And now you can see that the dotted blue line goes up and the solid blue line goes down. So what I'm going to do is just flip this green one. Oops, that is not going to do it, is it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, I just got the green line switched end for end. So it flipped the axes upside down, which probably isn't all that big of a deal, but um, it's something you could work around. But for the purposes of this, we'll straighten it out. Now we can see we're a little bit closer on the vertical and horizontal. It's still a little bit off, so I'm just going to tweak these green lines. I'm not sure this brick hearth is perfect, but you can see with just a slight adjustment of this green axis, I can get the blue to go nice and parallel to the edge of the trim. And uh, this whole thing is a bit of a compromise, as you can tell, between the realities of the job site, uh, digital perfection, and the uh, issues that we face with um, parallax in the uh, camera geometry, the camera lenses, etc. Et I believe that's where it comes from. Anyways, so those are the first steps in importing your photo, get it off your hard drive, bring it into the program, set the grid lines, and now we've got the axes set on this. So I'm going to stop the video here. We'll pick it up by uh, starting to build the space, the model, uh, will reside in.